Let's take a look at um, this simulation here. I've got our A-stable multivibrator circuit simulated in multi-sim. And as you can see here, we've got the two transistors, Q1 and Q2. They're the capacitors, C1 and C2. Here are the two LEDs, R1 and R2. Now, you'll also notice that the other resistors, R3 and R4, consist of a 10 kilo, actually I've got them in here, it was 1 kilo ohm. In our actual project, these are going to be 10 kilo ohm resistors. But 1 kilo ohm resistors in series with a variable resistor that C1 will be charging through here when this one's conducting, and, and C2 will be charging through this similar situation here with a variable resistor and the, and the, res, and the fixed resistor con, char, uh, charging through C2 on down through Q2. Um, the purpose of these two, uh oh, what have I done here? The purpose of these two fixed resistors is to give us some baseline resistance in here so that if this resistor were to be turned down to completely to zero, it would still have a base, you know, a fundamental resistance here of nominally one kilo ohm. And again, in our lab, we're going to use that as a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So there will always be some resistance between the 9 volt source and the base. We don't want to put 10 volts to the base. We possibly burn out the transistors doing so. Okay, I have hooked up here an oscilloscope where the A channel is going to be displayed red on our oscilloscope. It's going to be looking at the voltage on the collector of Q2. The B channel will be displayed in blue and it'll be looking at the base of Q2. Similarly, the yellow channel, channel C, is going to be looking at the base of Q1, and the green channel is going to be looking at the collector of Q1. So blue and yellow will be our base traces, and red and green will be our collector traces. Let's just go ahead and open up the the uh, oscilloscope, and let's go ahead and let this run. Now, there's a little bit of a of a uh, transient that takes place here, and so it takes a cycle or so for this to get up and actually running. But as you can see, the blue and the yellow, those are the base voltages. They never get up above, and let's just stop this here. Here, the blue voltage is running around now. You'll notice we're on five volts per division for both, um, on all of the, all four of the chases are on five volts per division. So you'll notice that the yellow one starts out at a negative voltage. Again, we said it was going to be somewhere around eight volts. Well, that's five, six, seven, maybe it's not quite eight. But it starts at some negative voltage and charges up until it gets to a point where the voltage on the base is seven tenths of a volt. It then throws that transistor open. It then, which feeding back through the circuit, through the capacitor, then ties the other or pulls the other base voltage significantly negatively. Remember again, down to about negative 8.3 volts. And it then charges up until it gets to a point where, ah, let it go again here. Now, the yellow one is going to be charging up. When it gets to the 7 tenths of a volt, it's going to force the blue, which is the base of the other transistor, down to a negative. And now the base on the first transistor stays at 7 tenths of a volt until this one gets up to where it's at the 7 tenths, and it then pulls the other one negative and turns the other one on. So the base voltages are going from around negative 8.3 volts on up to a positive 7 tenths of a volt. Now, let's look at the collector voltages. The blue and the yellow, the yellow and the blue are the base voltages. The green and the red are the collector voltages. You'll notice that when the base of one gets pulled down, the collector on the other then starts heading on up to the nine, and it gets there pretty quickly and just sits at the nine volts until the switching takes place. It then gets pulled down to something, and you can't even really read it on, on here, but the collector then gets pulled down to um, when 
the the transistor this this is connected to this red terminal gets um, when that transistor turns on the red then is sitting at the saturation voltage of about two tenths of a volt so let's let it go through here again the collector is up here when the transistor is off it's up here at around nine volts when it turns on the collector voltage drops down to the two tenths of a volt the saturation voltage and stays there until the switching and then we said it takes a little bit of time for that capacitor to charge but it charges relatively quickly and gets on up there to the nine volts and on and on it goes so when the collector is pulled low in this case when the um, green collector or the voltage here represented by the green is low the one diode will be on and it will stay on until this collector gets pulled low and then the diode turns on at that point.